1300-01-1170 is a way to do that. We must cross from one Wiganer to another Wiganer, Brian, yes. ahead of the World Club Challenge. The team that Robbo was talking about, waxing lyrically, some would say, the Mighty Panthers, they're going to take on the Wigan Warriors. And the head honcho happens to be the great Chris Radlinski. And he joins the run home with Joel and Fletch. G'day, Chris. Hey, boys. How are you? Oh, that Wigan accent. Yeah. Where, where are you, Rads, now? Exactly. Where are you sitting? I'm I'm just in my office, just in Standish, and it's uh, frosty and freezing, yeah, and it, it's uh, typical Northern uh, day in Northern England. Oh, I love Can that. Can you, Brian, I, I, I don't think our audience will understand this. Chris mm. most certainly will. Can you give us your first order of takeaway? Whenever well, there? so, Rads, <laughs> in 2006, so you you retired, didn't you, Rads, 2006 when I got there? Was it yes, because I did, of, mate. Was I it did. because of me? You didn't, you didn't, want, you didn't <laughs> want to play with me? <laughs> Yeah, you were you was uh, you was, was a tough teammate in the changing room. So I'm like, I couldn't take it anymore. So yeah. we get there, Britt and I both from Bondi, and we get put into Morris's house there at Parbold. Anyway, there's no. Yep. I had to go to training. There's no central heating. It's freezing. It's it's just after Christmas, and I come home from training. Britt goes, I'm starving. So I go down to the local takeaway store, and there was a. A little Asian lady. She was. I got to know her. Anne. She was Chinese, Chinese background, but I hadn't met her before. And I came in. It was like a <laughs> takeaway store. And I said, "Oh, I get some chips. Uh, can I get some chips?" And they. I heard about the chips and curry. So she puts the curry on there, and I'm watching it. And then she says, "In the because Wigan was very close to Liverpool. Yes. Well, Skel- Skelmersdale, which is a lot of Liver- Liverpool. Yeah. So she said, and she's Chinese, Chinese background. She said, in the Strongest Scouse accent I've ever heard. Would you like it up or wrap it up? And I went, what? <laughs> I went, what? And then the accent, I was just, I said, sorry, what did you say? Would you like it up or wrap it up? I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> but then it, got, then it got a little bit harder. I, I obviously got to, to know Anne quite well, but then it's the Wigan accent. Yes. When they miss words. Yes. Me hungry, up pub. Oh, uh, right. Rads, what's all that about, <laughs> by the way? Mate, listen, of all the great stories you could tell about coming here, and the first one you tell is about a, a curry shop on the edge of town. <laughs> well, I can't tell the other ones because uh, so we might get taken off here. Um, anyway, Rads. Hey, listen, I was, just, I was just listening to Robbo. Robbo, yeah. Robbo played for Wigan in, his, uh, in the late 80s. Yes. He had a stint over here. Yeah. Absolutely killed it. Yeah. What a legend. Well, he was saying they won three out of the four trophies. So I imagine it was a Challenge Cup. What was the other ones, Rats? Yeah, yeah. The league leaders? Is that a thing? He'd have won the league and yeah. probably the premiership as well. But uh, he was he was very early 20s at the time. But he, like, like, I remember he obviously had the rig on him. He was, oh. uh, he was a beast, wasn't he? Oh, he was scary, man. Um, Rats won a, yeah. a, a Lance Todd trophy back yes. in those days, didn't you, Rats? Uh, 2002, yeah. yeah. Um, cup final, cup final um, at, at Murrayfield in Scotland against uh, St. Helens. So, uh, yeah, lucky to get that one. This Penrith side is one of the best we've seen and in some yep. time. In the salary cap era, most certainly. And they get to take on your team. Now, not forgetting that England currently hold the World Club Challenge with St. Helens. Correct. A field goal victory over the Panthers last year. How are your boys looking? Yeah, look, look, we're, look we're looking okay. We're looking okay. Um, you know, we sold out the game and uh, unashamedly, I have sold it on the back of this being one of the... Uh, the best teams ever to come out of the NRL, you know. Yes. The uh, we've got a lot of Wiganers coming to the game, but we've got a lot of neutrals who, who literally want to see the Panthers and and, and Nathan Cleary play. So, and I, I sat down with my head coach and I told him that. I said, look, we're going to milk this a little bit, and he said, mm. you know, he's actually not bothered as long as it's a full stadium. So, uh, we're fully aware of the team who's coming over and the history, and the, you know, they're an impressive outfit to watch uh, on and off the field. I think of. Obviously, been working with the backroom team to try and get everything prepared for the game, but very slick operation, and um, you know, really cool to work with. And you know, looking forward to them getting here in a couple of weeks. Hey, Rads, for our Aussie uh, viewers and listeners, who should they be looking out for in the uh, mighty Cherry and Whites team? Well, uh, Man of Steel last year was uh, Bevan French, so he was the best player in the competition mm-hmm. last year over here. He obviously. Uh, Started with the, uh, I think he started with the Eels over there, um, and he's 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 just he's just lit the, lit the competition on fire over here. Um, I think probably the the lack of uh, spotlight on the players all the time has probably suited his his demeanour, and uh, he's just allowed himself to express himself on the field. So 
he's been fantastic for us. Um, we, we've got GA Field at fullback, who again didn't quite make it over there, but uh, the open spaces over here has has, has given him a lot of a uh, lot of opportunity to to use his speed to get around everything. So he's been great, mm. uh, and we've you know we've got a pretty pretty huge pack at the moment uh, who I know. Our head coach has said if we have any chance at all of beating the uh, the Panthers, it's going to be from the guys up front who who do the work for the for the backs to perform. So, yeah, you know, listen, we've got a pretty good team, and I know they've given a good account of themselves. Tell you what, it's a good story. Uh, Bevan French, who Rads refers to, Chris Radlinski of Wigan, he comes from a town here in Australia called Tinga of eight hundred people, mm. and that little eight hundred people town has produced what Bevan French has done to be a man of steel winner. Nathan Blacklock, who topped the try score four four years in a row and 100 tries, which has never been done over that period. Owen Craigie, the only player or the youngest player to play three um, Australian schoolboys tours in a row, as well as playing a grand final when he was 17 or 18. Yeah. Greg Inglis was up the road for a town of 800 people. You mentioned Preston? Preston Campbell won yeah. a Dally M. <laughs> uh, unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable story. Um the Penrith Panthers and the Wigan side. This sort of shape up, which is the World Club Challenge. Would you like to see it in Vegas and to jump onto the back of that, or you like hosting it over there in England? Uh, no, mate. When uh, when when we ended up winning the grand final, uh, the first question is uh, was straight after the game is what what happens with the World Club Challenge? Mm. And you know, I said right at the time, um, we'll, we'll play it anywhere. I mean, coming to the stadium in Wigan, I knew it would be a big event, and it'll be a magic night um, and I really want to make sure that the Penrith, ta- the Penrith team have a wonderful experience but you know I think I would have loved to go over over to Oz and, and to play in Penrith like Saints did and then obviously seeing all, all the hype around the, the round one game in the NRL and the, the double header in Vegas you know I'd love to be part of that mm. I'd love to be part of that so I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that we've got a club at the minute and we've got an owner who wants to wants to be adventurous and grow the game and, and, and take the brand of the club anywhere in the world. So um, if there are any opportunities or if you guys have got any sway or any pull in the competition <laughs> mm. over there, you can put us on the on the back of that, no problem. <laughs> hey, Raz, what is the um, the standard like in the Super League at the moment, do you think? I, w- I would say, if I, I was actually, the competition last year, Fletch, was, was really good. I think uh, it, the, the results were difficult to predict and it was a, it's a decent standard throughout the competition. I do think the season coming up could potentially see four or five teams at the top, uh, you know, pull away from the rest mm. of them. I think there are there are some teams who've recruited very strongly, and uh, there are some teams perhaps down the bottom end who uh, have not got the resources they probably once had. So uh, the game's got some challenges over here, Fletch. We're yeah. not going to we're not going to get away from that. Um, but I think I, I do think probably three or four teams at the top. Uh, you know, I wouldn't say I would. I would say probably mid-table NRL standard. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. So I, you know, I do, I do, I do see some some real quality players and some real good teams over here. So uh, just probably not at the level it was a few a few years ago. From being honest, Fletch. A hey. team, a team. Sorry, Rads. Who's been the beneficiary of uh, English Super League players have been the Canberra Raiders, yeah. and they've got one of yours, Morgan Smithies. What do we know about yep. him, him yep. Rads, and how do you expect him to fare in the National Rugby League? Well, listen. If you're expecting him to light the competition on fire, he's not that kind of player. But I couldn't imagine he's the type of guy you Ricky Stewart will absolutely love. Um, he'll turn up to training every day, absolutely train his socks off. Turn up at the weekend and he'll knock sixty tackles out, not miss any tackles, be industrious, play eighty minutes. Um, you know, so I think from that respect, he's probably a coach's dream. Um, and I think he'll, he'll win a lot of respect from the players alongside him by his unassuming nature and his just his work ethic, really. So I think you'll like him. I think uh, he's a he's a very t- typical Australian forward. He'll go about his business and with no fuss. So I think the Raiders will be pleased with him. Raz, what about this Jack Wellsby kid? He came out here and he played in the World Club Challenge and he had a, he had a stormer. He's got every club over here. He's got four or five clubs clamouring over him. Do you think that it would be beneficial for him to come and have a year or two over here, or you you think you've got to keep those players over there in the um, in the UK? Look, selfishly, I would love him to to stay over here because you know we're trying to get greater broadcasting rights and more mm. money in the game. So 
we need our best players. Um, but I think at some point he will he will have to test his luck over there. I think he's got all the skills, Fletch, but the one thing he has got, uh, which stands out more than anything, is that, that competitive nature. He's got that, that dirty thing inside of him that refuses to be beaten. Uh, and he really is an outstanding kid and, and nothing seems to faze him at this moment in time, mate. So I, I, I hate to say it, but I think he's probably got to go over there eventually. But at the moment, we've just got to try and milk him and, and, and try and get some more money out of people. Mm. That, Rad, that the cafe we used to go to in Standish, <laughs> what's that called? They had the best carrot, carrot cake I've ever come across. What was that joint yeah, called? That, um, that is now a, a block of flats, believe oh. it or not. So that's gone, man. Oh, well well <laughs> done. Gone. How many do you own of that? <laughs> hey, listen. Hey, listen. I uh, I went over to Magic Weekend last, last year in Brisbane. Yes. Uh, and I walked down the street. I thought, I'll go and say hello to Fletch because you're in this big glass ball. <laughs> and, by, and by the time I got there, he was just drinking a beer out of his shoe. And I thought, there's no way I'm going there. So I, I turned around and walked out the car park. Oh, that was good. Because uh, Gleese was there. Yeah. That was an interesting night. The great Martin yeah. Gleeson was well, there. Do, do you know what? I, I ran into Johnsy as well. And, and, and Johnsy had not been on the drink for 75 days. Correct. And I bumped into him on 76. Ah, <laughs> oh, 75. Oh, well. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You're looking, so you're looking fit, was, Rads. He, what have you been doing? You're looking good. Uh, that's, that's called stress, mate. That's yeah. stress, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> I don't no, it's good. It's good, mate. I, um, yeah, we're just, we're just, I, I take over. I, I get out for a run when it's dark and nobody's watching, but um, no, it's all good over here, Jen. It's all good. Yeah. How's your mate uh, Michael Maguire getting a fair coaching the Blues, you reckon? Well, look, look, he's, he's, a, he's a winner, isn't he? He, uh, he demands high, high, high standards from everybody. Uh, I can't talk with Mads. I caught up with Mads when I went over there. Actually, he was at the Raiders at the time, and he asked me the question about Morgan Smithies, and I, and I, and I told him to stay away, but he, he completely ignored me um, and, and went about it anyway. So, But, look, I think anybody who knows Mads knows he's an absolute winner, and, and potentially spending a few weeks in camp with him is enough. Because he's so demanding, Intense, yeah. um, you know. As you mentioned, no, he's, he was wonderful for the club over here, and he, and he, he put a lot of foundations in place that are, that are still here today. To be honest, so um, he's uh, he played an important role in our history. There's no doubt about that. And you've played an important role in the World Club Challenge. You actually beat the Panthers at Anfield in 1992. Uh, fun fact, Brian: the Panthers have never ever won a World Club Challenge. They lost in 1992 to Radlinski's Wigan Warriors, 2004, 2023. There was no version in 2022. Meanwhile, your side, Chris, they're looking for a record fifth World Club Challenge. So all the best with that, mate. Uh, we appreciate your time here, and we'd love to chat throughout the year to catch up on what's happening in the Super League uh, here on the run home with Joel and Fletch. Thank you so much, gents. I love what you do. Thank you so much. Thanks, Rads. Good on you, Rads, uh, and all the best there. Yeah, that'll be a cracking game. Wigan... Versus uh, Penrith, uh, different kettle of fish. You wouldn't have played in a World no. Cup challenge because you went to South, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, unfortunately. Missed out on that. They pumped them too. It was 34-0, I think. Oh, 